So I'll begin last time. So we defined the temporally planar algebra. and showed that it has the following properties. First one is finite dimensionality. And in fact, we showed something stronger. There is a basis. So it has a basis given by all the temporally leap tangles. And the correct number is so the number so for uh, p k epsilon the number of such is the Catalan number c k. So when I say it has a basis, I should say each p k epsilon. So given by all temporally leap tangles of that size and which number is given by this. Then we showed it as connected and irreducible in particular. That is the 0 and 1 spaces have dimension 1. That is that's already included in this part. And in particular, this connected implies that it is tracial. That is, each pk epsilon is equipped with a trace. With let me just say a picture trace given by the following triangle. So this is for two say this is for 2 plus. For 2 plus. So this gives a function from p 2 plus to p 0 plus and by connectedness this is identified with the complex number. So it gives you a linear functional on that space which actually is a trace. Tracial. Then um, it has modulus. And I explain what that means. Let us not get into that again. But the point of having modulus is when the modulus is non zero, if delta is non zero, then <coughs> each pk epsilon. has a normalized trace. And denoted by tau. And this tau is compatible with the inclusion. So tau is compatible with the inclusion of p k epsilon into the next one. And tau, of course, is defined by taking this picture trace and multiplying by normalizing it. So if you take 1 here, if instead of, if you put in the element 1 here, you will get delta squared. So you divide by delta squared and then it gets normalized to 1 at 1. So tau of x is delta to the minus k uh, z trace k epsilon of x for x and p k. This is the definition, definition of tau and it is compatible with inclusion. So all these properties we showed. So now I want to look at some more properties that this planar algebra has. Uh, but before I do that, I have to define 
what is the star structure on a planar algebra? So definition. So first, so I'm I'm defining adjoint of a tangle. So if you're given a planar tangle, so this has nothing to do with planar algebras as such. First, we'll deal with just tangles. These are just pictures in the plane. So the adjoint of a tangle T is given by, is the tangle denoted T star. Obtained by applying an orientation reversing diffeomorphism of R2 to T and all its data. So what exactly does this mean? So first orientation reversing diffeomorphism. So that can you can take that to be just reflection in some line. We can take just reflection in a line. So I'll do an example, then you'll see what it means. So for example, let's take the multiplication tangle of say three plus. <coughs> so M, which is M three plus. looks like this. So that's the multiplication tangle. Of course, I have to label the internal disks as something D1 and D2. <coughs> So now in order to get its adjoint, so I want to define what is the tangle, new tangle M star. I just take the multiplication tangle and reflect in some line. For example, I could reflect in say vertical line like this or reflect in a horizontal line like this and see what I get. So let me reflect in a horizontal line. So reflecting M. gives M star. And so what does M star look like? So M star equals, so imagine I've taken this and reflected it. I put a mirror here and reflected it, then it looks like this. Now when I reflect, this D1 will go below and D2 will be on top. So this is D1 and this is D2. And then we have the distinguished arcs. This is the distinguished arc for the external disk, D0. This is the distinguished arc for D1. And this is the distinguished arc for D2. It remains the same. So the distinguished arc for D1 is, is still this. Distinguished arc for D2 is still this. So we get this. Now if you look at this tangle, it looks very much like the multiplication tangle, except that the numbering of 1 and 2 has been reversed, right? So shading is as usual. It, it goes, everything gets reflected. Shading, star arcs, numbering, everything, all data. That's why I said by reflecting, applying this orientation reversing diffeomorphism to T and all its data. All its data gets carried over by whatever map you're doing. In this case, I'm just reflecting. So this is M star and we already know, we've seen M star several times. So this is just the one, two circle M. So this is just a, re it happens to be in this case, just a renumbering of M. In general, of course, that need not be. If I take a tangle T, T star and T need not be related by just a renumbering. T star could be an entirely different tangle. In this case, it is different, but it's only different by a renumbering. That's not relevant to what I'm saying anyway. I'm just mentioning it. So this is what T star means. 
the star of any tangle is obtained by just reflecting that tangle along with all its data that is it. And it does not matter in which line you reflect if I reflect in this line I will get something here which looks different but is essentially the same any two reflections are will be related essentially by a rotation. So, the two tangles will be the same up to isotopy of R2. So, this is a well defined process you can uh, apply to a tangle to get a new one. Okay. Up to yes. If you compose two of these reversing things, you get a one. Yes. So the thing is independent of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. So it, it doesn't matter which orientation reversing I do. If I do two orientation reversing diffeomorphisms of R two, I'll get an orientation preserving one, which means I get the same tangle back essentially by definition. Okay. So <coughs> one. One property I want to point out for this uh, process of adjunction is so this is a property I do not know I, I, I cannot prove this of course, but it is something that should be we will accept and this this property is if I have how does it behave under substitutions how does this pro process of reflection behave under substitution. So and the property is this. Um, T circle T twiddle D i star equals T star circle D i T twiddle star. This is the this is the property that I will assume right. You, if you think about it it is saying something fairly obvious. So, here is T and here is d i and inside this I am substituting t twiddle and then reflecting. t star that thing will be still called d i because that is how we are reflecting and what happens to this this will also get reflected. So, it is clear that if this whole if I this whole thing is T circle T twiddle if I put T twiddle in there it is T circle T twiddle and I'm then when I reflect I will just get T star circle T twiddle star. Okay. So, this property I will I will assume. Okay. Now, I can define what is a star planar algebra. So, a star planar algebra is a planar algebra with some additional structure. So, just like say a vector space then you have an inner product space you have some additional structure star planar algebra is some additional structure it is not something it is not something like connectedness or modulus it is a property that it has or not here we are giving some additional structure to this planar algebra and that is the following. So, definition a star planar algebra consists of a planar algebra P together with maps star which take each P k epsilon to itself. And satisfying the following. So, the first thing is an important thing is star is not linear, it is conjugate linear. Star is conjugate linear. <coughs> Second, star is involutive and third the one that links the planar algebra property with this star is that z t of x 1 tensor x b star is z t star of x 1 star tensor x b star. 
this star a star structure on a planar algebra is a collection of maps each one is equipped with a star map this is a conjugate linear involution which goes from pk epsilon to itself and this conjugate linear involution interacts with the planar algebra structure via this equation that is if i take a tangle and i put inputs x1 to xp in it and then star the result what i should get is the same as taking the tangle t star and putting the x1 star up to xb star into its inputs <coughs> this is the definition okay so, um, I claim that the temporally leap planar algebra has a star structure, but before I get to that, let us make some simple observation about planar algebra, star planar algebras. So, observe if P is a star planar algebra, then each PK epsilon is naturally a star algebra. I am just working over the complex numbers. Yeah, of course, for this, uh, when I am talking about conjugate linear, the base field I am assuming to be complex numbers. So, I want to say that if you have a planar algebra P, which is a star planar algebra, then each P k epsilon is a star algebra. So, what is a star algebra? So, recall star algebra equals algebra plus conjugate linear involution star satisfying. x y star equals y star x star. So, the only thing, so already we have, so to show that this each p k epsilon is a complex star algebra, what do we have to say? We already have an algebra, we already have a conjugate linear in involution. The only thing that we have to see is that x y star equals y star x star. So, so need, need only to check. x y star equals y star x star for x and y in p k epsilon. So, what does it mean? What does x y mean? So, by definition x y means z m applied to x tensor y, where m is the multiplication of p k epsilon. That is the definition. So, I am taking the star of some tangle applied to something and by the star planar algebra condition, x y star which is z m of x tensor y star and that condition says that this is z m star of x star tensor y star. That is what the condition said. Now, z m star of x star tensor y star means you take x star, you take the tangle m star, put x star in here and y star in there. In the first one you put x star, in the second one you put y star, but that you see is the same as taking m and putting y star in here and x star in there. And so, by the renumbering compatibility, this is the same as y star x star. This is by renumbering. Okay, so that so we have checked that. So once you have therefore a star structure on a planar algebra, automatically you get a whole set of star algebras, right? Each p k epsilon will now become a star algebra. Now we want to proceed further, and we want to get c star algebras. But before we do that, let's first understand how this temporally leap is a star planar algebra. Oh, 
Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So observe, yeah. So each piece naturally a complex star algebra and the inclusion <coughs> is a star homomorphism. I think it is worth verifying this. Let me just verify this. So to verify <coughs> that inclusion is a star homomorphism, we need to see So what is the inclusion map from pk epsilon to pk plus 1 epsilon? That is just given by the inclusion tangle i k epsilon to k plus 1 epsilon. So we want to check that z i k epsilon to k plus 1 epsilon, this tangle applied to x. So this is the inclusion of x in pk plus 1. When I start this, I want to check that this is equal to the inclusion of x star in the next higher one. So we need to see this, but what do we know? We know that this by the star planar algebra condition is actually equal to z this star of that star. So it is equal to z star of x star. So the only thing that is to be checked is the tangle identity that this tangle is the same as this tangle and that is just one picture verification. <coughs> so all of these kinds of algebraic things as, as we know in planar algebras come down to pictorial verifications. So I say 2 plus 3 plus is this. And so I2 plus to 3 plus star, if I take the star, I have to reflect it. I reflect it horizontally. When I reflect it in a horizontal line, I just get <coughs> and what happened to this star arc? This star arc is this, that star arc is that, and this is the same. We see that this is the same under reflection, nothing happens, and that is what we want. That this is the same as this applied to x, both things are being applied to x star. Okay. So, the next we want to do, next thing we want to do is to check that the Temple Lee planar algebra is a star planar algebra. So, what do we need in order to check that something is a star planar algebra? As we said, it is an additional structure. It is not just taking the temple Lee planar algebra and verifying something about it, but you need to give it some additional structure. So that is what we will do first. Proposition PTL delta is a star planar algebra. Okay, so proof. So the first thing is that we want to each pk epsilon you want to give it some star operation which is supposed to be conjugate linear and involutive. So first we define a star operation on each pk epsilon which is to be conjugate linear and involutive. Okay, so what is this? How do you define the star operation? So you have a vector space. We know that a basis for pk epsilon is given by all the temporally leap tangles of size k epsilon. So on this basis, I will define an operation, an involutive operation, and then extend it conjugate linearly. So define star on a basis of um, PTL delta k epsilon 
and extend by conjugate linearity. So what does this mean? So what is the basis? So basis is a temporary leap diagram and on the basis which are just temporary leap tangles. So define the star operation by reflection. So what let me just clarify this. So for example, so two times this plus i times this. belongs to P T L delta 2 plus. So, this is the element of P T L delta 2 plus. It is a com linear combination of tangles. I want to say what the star of this is. I have just defined what is the star of this and I have defined what is the star of this and then I have to extend by conjugate linearity. So, by definition its star is the element. 2 times the reflection of this. Let me take horizontal reflection. I get back the same thing essentially. And since I have to extend by conjugate linearity, this i has to become minus i. Then I reflect this, which also happens to be itself in this case. So this is how the star is defined for that particular element. So the important thing is, the reflection map is obviously an involution. So, star is going to be involutive. I have extended, I have extended something which is an involutive map on a basis. This takes, this preserves the basis. That is, it takes the basis to the basis and then extended it conjugate linearly. Okay. So, this is, do I have a choice? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. There is no choice. There is no choice. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so let me. Yeah, I. I star arc has changed. See, this is the star arc. When I reflect it in a horizontal line, this is the star arc. I have reflected in a horizontal line. Oh yeah, true. That's true. Maybe I, it's better to put it in the middle of the arc in general. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a good idea. I should do that. Yeah, from now star arcs, I'll put the star somewhere in the near the middle. And then it'll compatibility with reflection will be good. Okay. So as Sundar is pointing out, there is there is no choice. Okay. So claim. This is the only possible star operation that can be defined on PTL delta epsilon. True, true. Yeah, not, not, yeah, not on a, on a single one. It's the only possible uh, star planar algebra structure that can be defined on PTL delta. And the reason for this is that PTL delta, the elements of PTL delta are completely determined, completely spanned by tangles. And on tangles, we know what the star operation does. So let's let's prove this. Proof enough to show 
that the star the star of a temporary elliptic angle is the reflection you have to show that <coughs> the star of a tl tangle now tl tangle has two meanings considered as an element of of ptl delta k epsilon is just its reflection this is what we want to see so i i i want to explain just a little bit more so take a tangle temporary elliptic tangle t so t equals temporary elliptic tangle for example for example let's take this temporary elliptic tangle t <coughs> now what does this mean a planar algebra ptl delta is spanned by tangles it also has a basis of tangles so tangles here have two meanings one is tangles as tangles one is tangles as elements of this ptl delta but actually they are not elements what the correct element of ptl delta which corresponds to this is zt of 1 so the element zt of 1 in ptl delta in this case 3 plus is represented by the same picture and this represented by the same picture is what i explained earlier this is what this is a consequence of the fact of the substitution axiom when there are no internal disks that if i if i have zt of something 1 it's represented by that picture itself so now if i do star so zt of 1 star by definition is z t star of 1 star which is 1 by the star planar algebra condition but what is z t star of 1 z t star of 1 is represented by the reflected picture t star which is represented by the reflected picture t star and that that was our prescription so i'm saying any tangle its star is just the reflection so that and that has to be if you have a star planar algebra structure on ptl delta this is the only possible star planar algebra structure so that's 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 the uniqueness thing but now we have to show that it is a star planar algebra structure so why is this a star planar algebra structure on ptl so what needs to be verified there are three things i said had to be verified one is that it's um, conjugate linear that it is by definition another is it's an involution that also it is by definition i just reflect it so if you reflect twice you get back the same thing so that part there's nothing so the only thing that is to be verified is so need to check zt of x1 tensor xb the star of this is z t star of this is the thing that has to be checked and this is to be checked for what where x1 to xb come from the corresponding pk1 epsilon 1 up to pkb epsilon b xi belongs to pki epsilon i but in order to check this since it is conjugate linear it's it suffices for me to check on a basis so enough to assume we may assume that the x i s come from basis of these spaces
i that x i is z t i of 1, where t i is some temporally leaped angle. So, I can assume that each of the x's is actually a temporally leaped angles image under 1, which means it is represented just by that temporally leaped angle. And then what we see is, so what we are checking therefore is the following, hence we want to see z t of z t 1 of 1 tensor z t b of 1 star equals z t star of x 1 star. As I said x 1 star if, if it is z t y of 1 then the star will be z t star of 1 the same thing x 1 star will be that. So, z t star of z t 1 star 1 tensor z t b star of 1. This is what we want to check. But so let us just look at this part. What is this the star of? This is the star of z t applied to z t 1 applied to 1 up to z t b applied to 1. So I will so by the renumbering axiom sorry by the substitution axiom when there are no internal disks. the following thing follows. Um, it follows that z t z t 1 1 to z t b 1 equals z t circle t 1 up to t b in its internal disks d 1 up to d b. So, when I did the substitution axiom, I assumed that one of the inputs came, one of the inputs had no internal disk and then I stated it. But you could do the same thing, you could do by induction to when none of them have any internal disks and this is what you would get. The, the substitution axiom would tell you that this equation holds, this is part of the substitution axiom. So, this, so this side, so we therefore we want to see the following. Thus, we need to see. So, what is this? That one is z t circle t 1 to t b of 1 star. On the other side, again that has the same form as this. So, it is z t star circle t 1 star up to t b star again applied to 1. But these two are equal because um, <coughs> we all. Uh, how, what, what did I say? Uh, uh, because of that prop property, I said. But T circle T one to T B star is T star circle T one star to T B star, and so both. Uh, huh? But yeah, I I I didn't even prove it. I just stated it. That was the but thing that. Yes, sure, sure. Can you prove true, true, true. Yeah, as much of a proof as any of the others, <laughs> right? So, but this is equal to this, uh, and so we are done. So now we have shown. So one, so we have shown that the uh, temporally leap planar algebra has this additional structure. It is a star planar algebra. Now we want to proceed further, and we want to do something about C star. But let me first make. I think I'll define it, and I won't be able to prove much about that. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, before I get to C star, there is one more property that planar algebras may or may not have and that is called spherically. Spherically for connected planar algebras. So, this is a notion that is defined for connected planar algebras. That means P0 plus and P0 minus are both one dimensional, hence, both are identified with just the complex numbers. Then I want to define what it means for a connected planar algebra P to be spherical. So, a connected planar algebra P is spherical if um, <coughs> okay, how do I say? Sphericality? No, because uh, for example, even if I take just, even if I. Yeah, but the problem is, so let me take at let me take this tangle, right? This has an internal box of color one, and it's outside. I don't label inside. It's just a tangle. Okay, if you wish, I won't label the inside. So I have this. This gives you a map to P zero plus. So this is a tangle. So I have to shade it at least, right? So this gives you a map to P zero plus. Now if I move it over to the other side, that will give a map into P zero minus. So, unless these two are identified in some way, I cannot say the maps are the same. Uh, so, P, P0 plus gives you a map to P0 minus have some natural identification. Yeah, but the only case where we know that that happens in is, is when they are both C. When they are both C, they do have natural, when they are both one dimensional, they are both naturally identified with the complex numbers and so then I can make sense. Okay, let me let me come to the definition. So, is spherical if for any 0 plus tangle say, 0 plus minus tangle T all tangles obtained from T I will just say vaguely by spherical isotopy, I will explain what this means. All tangles obtained from T by spherical isotopy give the same uh, partition function, what is called the partition function. Zt. I will explain what this means. So, first we begin with a 0 plus minus tangle, a 0 plus or a 0 minus tangle. So, begin with uh, let me say the trace tangle. That is a 0 plus tangle with one internal box of color 2 plus. That is this one. So, trace 2 plus to 0 plus. It has an external of color 0 plus, internal of color 2 plus, and it is this particular one. That is the trace tangle. So, begin with such a thing. Then what you do is you remove the external disks boundary. So, remove the boundary circle of D0. And when you do that, what you are left with is often called a planar network. So, what remains? is called 
a planar network. That just I just erase this. What remains? Just the inside part. Whatever is the inside, that is called a planar network. Now, what do I do with this planar network? Now, you think of this planar network as being on the surface of a sphere. So, you have the plane and you think of it as the surface of a sphere. So, regard this as sitting on the surface of a sphere. Okay. So, when you regard it as sitting on surface of a sphere, then you do isotopy, then you move the sphere in whatever way you like. Just like you are moving the plane or you are stretching, bending and all these things, do the same thing to the sphere. Now, apply diffeomorphisms of the sphere. Orientation preserving diffeomorphisms of the sphere. to get other planar networks. Orientation preserving. For example, spherical huh? yeah, yeah, but I will still call it planar network. It is on the sphere, but So, for example, here is what I could do. So, let me draw a picture. So, think of this here is the sphere, and on the sphere, I have I will draw that planar network. That planar network looks like this. So, it is sitting on the sphere. Where P the star in the middle. Star in the middle, yeah. yeah. So, think of this planar network on sitting on the sphere. Now, I can do a spherical isotopy. What I can do is I can move the strings around, but now on the surface of the sphere. So, what I will do is I will take this string and stretch it and move it around the back of the sphere and then come back on this side. So, first, so this initially is like this, then it becomes like this, then it becomes like this, then it becomes like this, and then I will move this around the back of the sphere and come back. When, when it comes back, it will come back like this, come back like this, come back like this. So, finally, what happens is when the sphere is, when the string has gone around the back of the sphere and come back, it looks like this. And the important thing is, this whole thing is now shaded black. So, I still have the sphere, right. But now, the string has gone all around the back and come back. Now, this planar network looks like this. And then, I look at just this part. Forget the rest of the sphere, just look at that part. So, I have re I have done this whole process first forward and then backward. What did I do? I removed the boundary disk put it on the surface of a sphere, then did some operation which is moving the string across. Then again, I reintroduce the boundary disk and erase the sphere, right. So, why this has been done only for 0 plus 10? No. Because if it is not a 0 plus angle, there is a connection. I would not know what to do with the connection. So, you can do it with 0 minus also. Or 0 minus. So, 1 plus. With 1 plus, there will be a connection to the outside. If it is like this, what could I do on the sphere which will give me something different from this? It is essential that I erase that boundary disk. Without that, this whole process will not work. Here, I cannot erase the boundary disk. There are points there. I mean, it is connected to things on the boundary disk. So, there is there is no corresponding thing I can think of for these other things. Okay. So, what did I get? So, doing all this gives us a new planar network which looks like this. So, we get 
a new planar network I am going to I am going to I am going to do that. So, this is this is one of the planar networks I get right. Now, uh, in this case yeah ok and it shaded. So, the way it shaded is it shaded black on the outside and hence a 0 minus tangle which is this. By just reintroducing the outside disk. So, what all this procedure what did it do? I started with a 0 plus tangle which is this did something and ended up with a 0 minus tangle. Now, it should be clear that I can do this not just to this to this one I can do it for any tangle and I can do it in lots of ways. There are many possible tangles I could end up with, but all these tangles will be either 0 plus or 0 minus. How would I get another 0 plus tangle which is different? So, we do the same thing now with both strings. So, if both strings went around the sphere we would get this picture. So, here instead of taking just this one around I will take both around then it is clear you can imagine that you will get this picture. Now, that might look the same as that, but it is not they are two different tangles e even if, if I put in say if I, if I put in this, this is also a 0 plus tangle that is also a 0 plus tangle, but these two 0 plus tangles are not the same as tangles in the plane. Even if I rotate it the star will go to the wrong position here the star this one the star is here the other one if I rotated it to match this the star would be here and these two are not the same as planar tangles, but we what what this sphericality axiom is saying is both these will give the same z t. In fact, everything all three of these give the same z t and it is important that what sense does it make for that z t to be the same as let us call this one say t tweedle. This is also has a 2 plus on the outside, but a 0 minus 2 plus on the inside, but a 0 minus on the outside. Now, what does it mean to say that the original and the final have the same z t? So, let us just see what that means and that is where we need this connectedness to make sense of the statement. So, clearly uh, the number or uh, color of the internal boxes or disks does not change. As T becomes T tweedle, right? Not just for this T, for any T. The internal things do not change, the color does not change, and the number also does not change, everything is the same. T and T tweedle both give you maps from the same space. So, both domains will be PK1 epsilon 1 to p k b epsilon b, but what about the ranges? We began with a 0 plus the original range of t was p 0 plus. Now, it is possible for t twiddle to be p 0 plus or p 0 minus as we have seen after doing this procedure there are many possible t twiddles you can get and their output will be either a 0 plus or a 0 minus. This thing could have been shaded black on the outside like here or it could have been shaded white on the outside like here. 
so that the, the final t, t twiddle, whatever, whatever you want to call it, could go into p0 plus or p0 minus. So what does it mean to say that these two maps are the same? So the spherically axiom asserts that are not axiom, spherically property. This is a property which something can have or not have. Requires that z t plus z t equals z t twiddle. And when after identifying p zero plus and p zero minus with the complex numbers. So you need this identification of p0 plus and p0 minus. Yeah, see, because what are you doing? This I started with this picture, right? This was black. Then I made it bigger. I made it very big here. So this whole thing will be black. And then it went around and came. So it made the entire sphere black, most of it black except for this small part which is here. Only this part is white. Everything has become, because this went all around making that entire thing black. As it went along, the black region kept on. No reflection. No reflection. I did not do any reflection. See, think of it, think of this picture on a ball. It is on a ball and think of these as two strings. Here is one string, here is one string. I take this outer string all around the back of the ball and come back here. So the region that was black kept on increasing until it made almost the whole sphere black except for this part in here. Okay. So so coming back to this, so the sphericality property says what kind of strap did they put on handbags on buses, these buses? Huh. I don't know. And you, and you have you know, your cards and wallet and everything there. Uh. And then you close it and then you put one. There's one. Go around. There's a rubber band there. Okay. So you just bring it to the other side and then it locks. It's closed. It. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So coming back to this. So from one single 0 plus tangle t, you can get a whole lot of 0 plus or 0 minus tangles t twiddles. There are many t twiddles you can get by this procedure by taking these strings around across uh, over the sphere. And for all of these, all these z t's should be the same. And what does it mean to say should be the same? If it is p0 plus and p0 plus, then it is clear what it means to be the same. But p0 plus and p0 minus, what it means is that both of these are identified with C because it is a connected planar algebra. And under this identification, the maps should be the same. So this is the sphericality property. Okay. Yeah, oh, I did not quite, mm, yeah, okay. So let me st state a proposition about sphericality and apply it to the temporally Lieb algebra. You probably have this class for your iPad. They have a, uh, this, the thing that sits on you, the thing that it is. The iPad can have a cover. Uh, yes. Uh, uh. And then that cover can be, can I I, for the one that I have, it does, doesn't, it doesn't, it's just a, it's, a, it's what they call that magic yeah, cover. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine. Okay, so what I want to prove is one proposition about sphericality. Ah, and this is, this is a useful proposition. So, if a connected planar algebra P, Um, is irreducible and has modulus then 
then it is spherical automatically. So, this is will we'll often many of the planar algebras that we deal with will be irreducible and with modulus and they are all automatically spherical. So, how does someone prove this? So, how, how are you going to prove anything about sphericality? So, we need to begin with a 0 tangle T is you say a 0 plus tangle T and consider all tangles that you can get from it by moving on the surface of the sphere. How do we describe all such? So, the proof essentially hinges on the following thing. So, um, given a 0 plus minus tangle T. So, all the tangles T twiddle we can get from it by spherical isotopy. can be obtained via moves in each of which one string is moved across the point at infinity. on the sphere. Yeah, yeah, uh, together with planar isotopy, yes. Together with planar isotopy. In each of which one string? In which, not in each of which. Huh. In which one string is more across the point at infinity. In so which can be a or is a or is a planar isotopy. Okay, so this is the essential thing. So now let us analyze each of these two kinds: planar isotopy. Under planar isotopy, nothing is happening. We know we already have a planar algebra. So under planar isotopy, we know the function doesn't change at all. There is no problem with that. So, we only have to analyze moves where one string is moved across the point at infinity. So, let us begin with a tangle T. So, begin with T. So, it, it there is some, some picture and there is so it is let us say it is on the surface of the sphere and here is my original D 0 say. That was the original D 0 for the tangle. Think of it as on the front of the sphere and here I have my tangle T something. Now, what am I doing? I am taking one string of T somewhere and moving it across the surface of the sphere, across behind the sphere and getting back. So, let us see what how that looks enlarged a little. So, that one string that T I can think of as this and some nonsense here lying on the sphere. So, this is the string moving across point at infinity. Point at infinity is the one that I am thinking of at the back. You are achieving this fact or you are proving? I am trying to prove this fact. Which fact? I am trying to prove the proposition. That I am assuming. That I am assuming. That spherical isotopy is generated by uh, planar isotopy together with this one the moving the point at infinity essentially. I am assuming this fact, right? Yeah. So, yeah, this is one of one of the assumptions that. Huh? Well, I, I let me just say assumption for now. Let me not even say a fact. <laughs> okay. So, you begin with T and you write draw the picture like this. So, here is the sphere, this is the surface of so this is the sphere. 
and there is your tangle and this one string is going to be moved across. But now what we notice is that this here whatever is inside here is finally a so I claim that T is obtained as so T T is expressible as let me say uh, trace circle some tangle s that is what I am saying. Yeah, that outermost see each time you will move one string across initially what may, may not have see in this when we had this picture you first moved this one across this was an inner string but once you move that across now that has become an out both are outer strings now. So, you could move either that one across or this one back. So, each time one string is moved across the point at infinity that will be an outermost string for that tangle. I mean there could be more than one for example, if you have a tangle like this I could move this string across or this string across or that string across it, there could be more than one outermost string. Okay. So, the claim is that T is expressible as the trace tangle circle S. This here is a picture of the trace tangle whatever is inside here is S where S is a 1 plus tangle it has to be a 1 plus tangle right 1 plus tangle will have 1 on the out, 2 points 2 boundary points. So, any T which is a 0 plus tangle is expressible in this form and this string is the one that moves across. So, we want to show uh, yeah. So, then T twiddle is then let me call this trace twiddle 1 plus 0 minus circle the same S and what is this tangle? where trace 1 plus 0 minus twiddle is same as trace tangle the other way back. No, 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 I am not assuming that. T may be anything. Uh, that is what that is that is what this picture is supposed to illustrate. So, what I am doing to T is looking at that outermost one. So, for example, take this T let me to take this one if I want to think of this as the outermost one I will enlarge it like this then I will think put all of this inside S that is what I am doing right. So, it is always a one that out of that single thing which I am moving across circle some 1 plus tank ok. So, then T twiddle is this. So, what we are what we are trying to compare therefore, is so two things we want to show that Z T and Z T twiddle are the same. So, yeah. So, is, is this clear? Yeah, I should this is the crucial step. I claim that if T is of this form then T twiddle is of this form because what is T is this picture T twiddle is the same thing except this thing goes around this way this is the trace tangle that is the trace twiddle tangle both are applied to the same S. So, we need to see want to show that Z T equals Z T twiddle. Since both are being applied to S it suffices therefore, to verify that that trace tangle and that trace twiddle tangle give you the same result. Hence, it suffices to see. Okay. So if, that is, if, this is, this is t, if which one the is T? Ah, this one is T. Yeah. Uh, mm. Then what is T twiddle? T twiddle will be obtained by taking this across, so it will look like this. A T twiddle, a possible T twiddle, uh, by taking this thing across the surface, across the point at infinity. Okay. okay. So hence, it suffices to see. 
that um, Z trace equals Z trace of 1 plus 0 minus that these two z's are the same. Of course, it is always under the condition that I have identified 0 plus p 0 plus and p 0 minus both with the complex numbers that is the only thing that makes this thing sensible. Right? So, we want to see this, but now we use the fact now use the fact or use the assumption that p is irreducible. That means P1 plus is one dimensional. That is what irreducible means. P1 plus is one dimensional. So, any element of 1 plus is just a scalar multiple of 1. Hence, to check the above. Suffices to see after substituting 1 that z trace 0 plus of the 1 of 1 plus is the same as that thing. Applied to the 1 of 1 plus. 1 means the unit Here, twiddle. twiddle yes this one twiddle. So, let me apply this we know how to do it is just a matter of putting the 1 there. I.e. that this was the trace this tangle and inside it I must give the input the 1 of 1 plus the 1 of 1 plus is just this line. So, I just get this and shaded how this was shaded like this. So, this will be shaded like this I want to check that this on one hand is equal to the trace twiddle tangle is this right and again I substitute 1 plus. So, I get this, but now it is shaded this way. So, I want to check that these two are the same, but that is exactly what the modulus condition says. The modulus condition says that this is delta times 1 plus and that is delta times 1 minus. So, if you identify with, with the complex numbers 1 of 0 plus and 1 of 0 minus with complex numbers both of these are identified with the same complex number delta. So, by the modulus condition where no I should well actually I should because these all have so external disk. No, 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 no. Finally, you have to do your car back to the planar algebra. So, how, how do you get down to just one black? This one? You will put that inside. Yeah, yeah. Both of that's both of them are inside. Yeah, that is why the shading on the outside. Both of them are inside at D zero. The only if tangles you can evaluate tangles. So, by modulus condition, these are equal. And so that finishes the proof that if if it is irreducible and connected and has modulus then necessarily it is spherical. So, for most for the most part we will neglect sphericality and it will many times it will be automatic. Uh, <coughs> okay. ah, corollary so, corollary of this is that our temporary leap is spherical. P T L delta is a spherical planar algebra. <coughs> okay. Yeah. So I still have not come to the definition of subfactor planar algebra, but we'll continue. <coughs>